if you remember, psi was a function of the distance from the nucleus, r times a function of the direction, theta and phi, where y here is your spherical harmonic, the same wave functions we saw in the particle on a sphere. And this function of r is called the radial function. So if you take the square of this radial function, big R, and multiply it by the square of the distance from the nucleus, you get what's called the surface density function or the radial distribution function. Basically, what this function tells us is how the likelihood of finding the electron varies as you move away from the nucleus. In other words, it's a function of distance. If you want to have a better visualization of the overall wave function, the overall probability of finding the electron uh, around the nucleus, then you have to look at the more three-dimensional representation of the wave function. And typical way of representing these wave functions in three dimensions is to use what's called an isosurface. A surface, an isosurface is a surface where the probability density for finding the electron is the same at all points in that surface. Okay, so uh, typically uh, the kinds of images you find in your textbooks, especially freshman chemistry textbooks, would have what's called a 90% isosurface. That's a surface that encloses a region where the probability of finding the electron is about 90%. So it resembles the uh, electron cloud, the shape of the electron cloud. Uh, if you remember, we can say that uh, you can represent the probability of finding an electron by an electron cloud, where the cloud is thickest, there's the highest probability of finding the electron there. So there's a couple of websites that you should look at to see these really nice visualizations. Uh, one website, you can just Google Orbitron, O-R-B-I-T-R-O-N, at Sheffield University. And when you get to that, you can uh, click on any of these orbitals listed on the left-hand panel. Let's say you want to look at the probability of finding the electron for the 1s orbital. Over here at the top, you will have the dots representation. That's the using an electron cloud to represent the probability of finding the electron. So where your cloud is thickest, that's, those are locations where there's a, there's a high probability of finding the electron. Of course, you can also, have seen this before, I believe, you can also look at the plot of the radial distribution function. So you can see in the case of the 1s, this distance right here, which we call A0, where the Bohr radius is the most probable distance of the electron from the nucleus. Okay, so if you look at the 2s orbital, okay, uh, you'll note that this is a, it's a spherically symmetric uh, representation here, and you have, um, if you remember your radial distribution function for a 2s orbital, okay, the probability increases as you move away from the nucleus, goes to zero, increases again. So you see this distance right here where the probability of finding of the, the electron is zero, that actually represents a spherical surface. All points that are equidistant from a given point, in this case, all points that are equidistant from the nucleus would represent a sphere. So if you look at your uh, representation for the 2s, you'll see these two spheres right here where you have a boundary between these uh, two shells, I'm sorry, where you have a sphere here that separates the um, bigger sphere from a smaller sphere, you could say, that's the node. Okay, so if you look at the dot representation, electron cloud representation, this one's color-coded, all right, so you'll see it's blue inside, that simply means that the wave function is positive there, and it's color-coded, so it's negative when it's red, when it's represented by red dots. So you're, you're going from a blue region to a red region, you're going through a spherical node. A spherical node is a, also known as a radial node. That's a sphere where the probability of finding the electron is zero. Let's take a look at the 3s. 
see in this case, you see two, you have two nodes. There's one, and there's another one over here. Okay. If you look at the radial distribution function for that, oops, you see those two nodes. One. So this represents a small sphere, and this one is a bigger sphere, spherical surface, where the probability of the electron is, for well, finding the electron is zero, and this is the distance where your electron is most likely to be found for uh, 3s orbital. Okay, so you'll notice 1s, 2s, 3s, all the s orbitals we say are spherically symmetrical. It doesn't matter which direction you take, okay? You look at the these functions. Um, doesn't matter which direction you take. The probability of finding the electron is the same regardless of the direction that you take. It only depends on r. But when you look at the p orbitals, then you start to see some directionality. Okay. okay. So these are these are representations are the p x, p y, and p z orbitals. If you look at the dot representation. Here's your PZ orbital. You can see again your, your dots are color coded, so that tells you the wave function has opposite signs in the, the, these two regions right here. So the, when you see something like this, that tells you that there's a node between those two regions. So uh, this is what we would call an angular node. And the reason it's called an angular node is because this is basically, in this particular case, this is the xy plane. And that node results from your uh, spherical harmonic at this value of theta. In this case, if you were doing spherical harmonics, the xy plane in spherical polar coordinates is theta equals pi over 2. That's pi over 2 from the z-axis. So y of pi over 2, when theta is pi over 2, uh, you get a value of 0 for a spher spherical harmonic. All right. Uh, the other website that you need to look into has really has some very nice uh, representations, three-dimensional representations of these orbitals. Uh, is at Davidson College. So you just do a Google search for davidson.edu and atomic orbitals. Uh, if you want to view these websites at home, you're going to need to plug in, download the Java 3D plugin. So just click on orbitals here. And so this is the representation for the 1s orbital. So on the left here, you have the radial distribution function. In the middle here, you have the electron density plot, where it's brightest. That's where it's the highest probability of finding the electron. And on the right here, you have the isosurface plot. I believe this is the 90% isosurface plot. So you can look at it from any uh, perspective in three dimensions. Okay. So if you want to look at the 2s orbital, this is what you see. Again, here you see that you have a node over here that represents that sphere right there between the green and the red region. So your wave function is changing sign there. Okay. Note that your radial distribution function itself doesn't change sign because you're squaring the radial function there. So, um, but the actual wave function itself does change signs as you cross a node. Okay, so this is what the 3D surface plot looks like, and the isosurface plot look like in three dimensions. Okay, of course, you can't see that inner sphere in this 90% isosurface shown on the right. And if you want to look at uh, 2px, let's look, look at 2pz first. Um, this is what it looks like. Okay. Uh, you're looking at this from the z-axis, but if you look at it from the from the side, you'll notice your xy plane. Okay, so this is your xy plane right here. This is your xy plane is a node. So the re, there's 
there, there is directionality in this uh, wave function. It's more probable to find the electron above and below the xy plane. So if you head out away from the nucleus on the xy plane, you're not going to find the electron. Okay. So anytime you see the isosurface plot shown in sections, that indicates that there's a node between those sections. And uh, color coding is usually a good uh, indicator of the existence of a node. When there's a change in the color of the plot, that indicates a change in the, in the algebraic sign of the wave function. Okay. Now, if you're doing uh, 2px, that's what it looks like. Okay. You can see there's a lobe uh, above Okay, on one on both sides, on either side of the Y Z plane. Okay, so in positive X along the positive X axis you have a positive a high probability of finding an electron. Okay, towards the negative X direction you have a high probability of finding the electron. But in the X Y plane, the probability of finding the electron is zero. Okay. Uh, 3D Z squared. Okay. This is looking at it from the top. I mean, see. So that look that looks like, and from the side, and in this case you have two angular nodes. If you remember our discussion of the particle in a sphere, when L equals two and M equals zero, you have two angular nodes. This node right here, it's a conical surface where the probability of finding the electron is zero. And you've got another node down here, another con conical surface down here. So your wave function changes sign at its, as it crosses your conical surfaces. So from a certain theta, I think this was like 53 degrees or 57 degrees, 57. So your wave function changes sign. And then when it crosses over again, uh, down here, the wave function changes sign again. So you can say, you can describe this shape of your dz squared orbital as being like you have a donut here and to one lobe above and one lobe below the xy plane. Now, real orbitals, if you remember, we said when we were talking about the, um, when we were talking about the, spherical harmonics that with m, when m, absolute value of m is not zero, okay, well m, when m is not equal to zero, then you get an imaginary function. Your wave function is imaginary because of this term right here, e, that's e to the i m phi. So when m is plus one, this is the term that you get. And so you can't really plot that, okay, what you can plot is the absolute value of psi or you can plot the real component of psi and the imaginary component of psi. Or to make things easier, what we do is we take linear combinations of functions that have the same m. So 2p plus 1 and 2p negative 1, if we take linear combinations of those, so there's one case where you can add the 2 and the other case where you subtract, then you get equivalent, an equivalent pair of uh, orbitals that will have no imaginary parts. In fact, in this particular case, okay, uh,